Hello, welcome to today's discussion on the GES test paper 2. Basically, most of you have already got nervous over the test. I request you please understand the motto of this test series. But prior to making you understand, let's first of all discuss the test. See, the first question was, discuss the role of the Indian diaspora in shaping the India's foreign policy. What are the keywords over here? First of all is the diaspora and second one of here is the foreign policy. Most of you must be knowing that what is a foreign policy. Foreign policy is nothing but a set of norms or rules that a nation adopt towards another nation. Done. But do you need to write the meaning of foreign policy over here? No. But do we need to write the meaning of the Indian diaspora? Yes. See, the Indian diaspora basically how do we define it? It's nothing but a group of people who who can trace their origin to India or who are Indian citizens living abroad temporarily or permanently. This is the definition that has been given by Drishti IAS. Further, they said that ki it could be PIO, OIC or NI, NRI. But actually that is wrong. As per the MEA website or the Ministry of the External Affairs says that the Indian diaspora basically includes your PIO, the NRI and SPIO. Basically, you must be knowing that PIO and OIC have been merged in 2015. So PIO means person of Indian origin, NRI means non-returning Indian and SPIO means stateless person of Indian origin. These are basically example is the Tamilians living in Sri Lanka, Hindus living in Pakistan, Hindus living in Afghanistan, Hindus living in Bangladesh. Obviously, their origin is none other than India, but they cannot actually prove it. Now, See, exactly it says that how the Indian diaspora is influencing the foreign policy or the Indian foreign policy. Let us understand this one by one. First, enhancing our engagement. How? That is from the look to act. Most of you basically have heard that look east and act east. See, look east was nothing but economic engagement. Act is, is nothing but economic plus cultural engagement or people to people tie p to p tie now indian diaspora has influenced the indian policy indian foreign policy that is that is going beyond economic tie up to people to people and cultural tie up example act east and act west policy i hope you get this act east act west Please listen to the video carefully. You can very well get it. Don't worry about it. Next, strengthening the ties, especially with the United States. Example, aftermath of the nuclear testing. See, Indian diaspora have been very much successful in strengthening India's foreign policy, especially in strengthening India's ties. One of the example was in the aftermath of the nuclear testing, 1998, Pokhran testing, what happened that US imposed sanctions on us. However, it was the Indian diaspora which lobbied in the US Congress in favor of India as a result of which the US removed its sanctions from India. Apart from it, it even signed the 123 agreement. This is nothing but a uh, nothing but it uh, basically it's uh, that to allow the import of fissile material from the, what is fissile materials nothing but nuclear material from US. No need to write such thing, but simply strengthening the ties. How does it strengthen the ties? Basically, it helps uh, basically in the uh, during the time of crisis. You can cite this example. Next. Basically, what happened was that we had a regional specific foreign policy. Now, as you can see that we have a foreign policy is not that key will have overall the foreign policy would be same for everyone. No. We started having regional specific foreign policy. Look East is nothing but a specific foreign policy towards the Southeast Asia. Again, Look West is nothing but a specific policy towards West Asia. And Look Beyond East means it's saying that go beyond East means engagement with the Latin American countries. That is regional specific foreign policy as per the diaspora. Next, establishing new links. See, when I say establishing the new links means that he whenever we are establishing a foreign embassy or a foreign mission in any country it was also one of the one of the reasons of the indian community that was present over there example your jamaica suriname guana trinidad 
in this india started having this mission or the embassy because of the stab because of the because of the existence of your indian diaspora that's simple next strengthening india's soft power diplomacy how namaste modi howdy modi is nothing but showcasing the india's soft power diplomacy means we are engaging in a we are engaging with the other countries through the people through cultural activities next proactive response system that is see one of the india's for see when sushma swaraj was the ministry of the external when she was the minister of external affairs you must have known that she continuously used the twitter account to resolve the problems of the any indian pio who has been stranded outside india now that is one of the change in the foreign policy what we had a proactive response system for helping the pios for helping the indian origin people that was one of the changes of the indian foreign policy next enhancing our cultural engagement for example international yoga see first of all we have 25 million uh, indian diaspora spread across the world now now when we are promoting yoga it's nothing but we are promoting our foreign policy we are promoting our engagement how through the culture again hence enhancing our cultural engagement that is our foreign policy is being engaged through culture understood that we are engaging our foreign policy through our culture next see basically this is how see then what would be the conclusion from this you can conclude that hence the indian diaspora impact on the foreign policy has been significant simple conclusion no need for a extraordinary conclusion simple definition of the indian diaspora then the role of indian diaspora in indian foreign policy is as follows expand the seven points and it's done next india's nuclear doctrine is relevant to the challenges of the current time see what is the india's nuclear doctrine first of all is that it says the minimal credible deterrence why do we need a minimal credible deterrence what is deterrence means that ki in case we are holding a minimum number of nuclear warheads why because to deter deter by china and pakistan from using them we have nuclear weapons if you use then we will use again why to prevent the other nuclear weapons uh, other nuclear power countries from using their weapons second no first use third retaliation to retaliation would be done by the civilian leadership and last but not least no use of the nuclear weapon against the non nuclear state this is nothing but to establish that india is a responsible power basically what happens is that in the recent challenge so the biggest challenge to india is that india cannot get a permanent seat in the united nations security council hence india has to establish itself as a responsible power hence indian nuclear doctrine is as per this challenge and second that india is a peaceful nation hence a commitment to no use of to commitment to no use of uh, sorry commitment to, uh, to the goal of the nuclear free world above all see no spread of the nuclear technology again so basically our commitment to a peaceful nation not to conserve the world peace next is that ki again there is one more policy that nuclear retaliation against the use of chemical weapons see this is one of the the in the present scenario india also realizes that the attack can also be in the form of a chemical weapon hence nuclear missile can also be used to uh, attack or to deter chemical weapons i hope you get that next china factor to threat uh, china pakistan factor is a threat to india's external security see this is basically i have drawn this diagram see if you see this this is nothing but your obor if you can draw this diagram it's so far so good amman tota yangong this is your godhar see how is the nexus see first in the how is the uh, how the how, see first of all the introduction china park the factor is a threat to india's external security uh the following reasons can be cited number 1 in the land frontier first of all you can say that the cpec or the china pakistan economic corridor which is passing through the pok as shown in the diagram over here 
hence this passing is based on um, while well, the POK is the sovereign territory of India next China's OBOR that is o one belt one road as a, uh, in this one belt one road the Gwadhar port of the Pakistan is also a part hence this is basically a challenge to India's maritime authority next China support to park in the UN especially where in the Masood Azhar case Masood Azhar is who he is a non-state actor or a state-sponsored terror uh, terrorist from the Pakistan. Now, most of the time, in many of the cases, China used its veto to block Masood Azhar. However, in the recently, the Masood Azhar has been declared an international terrorist after making significant compromises. So, hence, writing this point is relevant. Similarly, in the Jammu Kashmir uh, case also, China took up these things in the United Nations. Next. Strengthening military ties, especially with the China providing the Jian fighter jet. Hence, from all this point, you can say that the external security of India is under threat with the China-Pakistan nexus. Next, India's maritime security policy. See, India's maritime security policy or strategy both are the same. See, this strategy got evolved after your 2611. I hope you know what was 2611. See. India's maritime, see basically if in case this case if I have to write an intro I would simply say India's maritime strategy has got evolved after 2611 the policy are as follow first of all Indian Navy was responsible for the overall maritime security which includes the offshore and the coastal Indian Coast Guard for the coastal security again the national committee again formation of the national committee at the apex level that is your national committee on strengthening maritime and coastal security similar committees at the district and the state level to review the security scenario next establishment of a joint operation center for navy and the coast guard next establishment of the national command control of communication and intelligence network why for the real time information sharing <coughs> sorry i hope you basically got what to write and what not to write see now please listen very very carefully this is the biggest question you need to know why test series see most of us are thinking that with test series we are writing and hence we should get marks getting marks is should not be the goal this is the very wrong goal why test series one and only reason is that to know the question To rectify yourself. To bleed here. Or to say. To sweat here. So as to. Bleed less there. If you get bad marks doesn't matter. Test series is not to get marks. Please get this thing out of your mind that test series is to get marks and to show others that we have got such good marks. No. Test series is to rectify yourself. To know where you are lacking. To sharpen your skills. Trust me, after giving out test series, you would see that key. you have made significant inter You have made significant improvement. And trust me with this. Keep giving the test series. How much marks you get is irrelevant. Trust me, how much marks you get is irrelevant. Even if you get one, it's irrelevant. Even given the condition that from that test series from which you have performed so badly, you learned a lesson from it. But if you're learning nothing from the test series that you're giving, then you are in a greater, greater disadvantage. Test series, give it and learn from it. Now again students are asking sir what is the material sir See, just tell me one thing for all these questions can't we just find an answer through the net this is every question I have found through the net even I have mentioned from where I have found it out now please use the net find the answer at least at least what I can see is that key, now you won't be having any confusion of what who an Indian diaspora is at least you know who an Indian diaspora is see how did you know? Because you attempted this test series. You attempted this test series though and, and hats off to those who wrote this test series. Difficult question.
I agree. Question was difficult, but for your sake, trust me, this would help you improve. Now, I won't waste much of your time. Thank you and please do not worry for the marks. Good night.